Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm very excited about this episode. Um, Obviously, this is a solo episode because of how the introduction just went, but I am your host, Shelby. Welcome back to Champ Strength Champs. Um, This is not a Cheers to Careers episode. This episode is actually one that I've been meaning to record for a very long time. Um, Never really was sure when the right time was going to be. Um, And then I want to record one with our friend Lois about like working mom stuff. Um, But this topic today is all about mom guilt and mom shame and just some of the things that we go through as moms as we are raising these kids and (laughs) trying to figure out our own life and deal with our own traumas and grow as humans and have a career and not go bankrupt and all of the things so that is our topic today um it was almost about to be like the perfect example of a topic because I was going to be recording like pretty late today because my schedule has just gotten out of control the last couple of days I have let it get out of control and the mom guilt and shame in me was like okay Henley has her final cheer party today and I wanted to go like I have stuff that I'm contributing I wanted to at least get there set it up see her at the beginning and then I was gonna like rush home make sure we had dinner um and then record and honestly I might have preferred that because I'd at least be drinking wine because today is a day where I just want a glass of wine but we shall proceed. I'm recording before because I found time before. So that is what we're doing. But um, the reason I wanted to talk about this is I think I know I'm not alone, actually. Like I was going to say, I think I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. I know that I'm not alone when it comes to being a mom and navigating this crazy world and trying to work on myself, trying to work on my marriage, trying to be a good mom, trying to be a badass in society and my career. And you never know if you're making the right decisions. You feel so guilty. You get so burnt out for like, like weeks at a time. And you get, you finally get like a chance for a break. And then suddenly you like are crying because you miss your kid or all you're doing is talking about them. Or when Wally and I get to go on like date night, we talk about the kids like seriously so much. And it's like, we try not to, but it's like, that's our world, you know, like that's, that's who we're focused around. And so I don't know, it's, it's a lot. Um, One of the biggest things that like highlights it for me too, is like how involved I am in my kids' lives. But then also I'm like, so excited to have like alone time away from them. If I have like a work trip or I'm going on a girl's trip or whatever, but I get like so much guilt, anxiety, shame as I'm leaving. Like it's the night before and I'm immediately like, oh my God, I don't want to leave my kids behind. Like, I'm so sad on the airplane. I will always cry. I remember saying on my, I don't, I feel like I said it on the podcast, but like my first trip when I went over to Vienna, no, it was my second one. I went to Vienna and I traveled alone that time because my coworker was already there and I cried the entire way and I was so emotional and I told Taylor and I think I told you guys that like I was crying because of like joy and happiness and sadness about being a mom and my kids and like I would just think of my kids and I would start tearing up right here a song or I'd watch a movie and I was just like in the bathroom I remember at one point like crying because I was just so happy and proud and sad all at the same time about my kids so I don't know being a mom super weird. Um, I always like tell people like, it's such a weird experience. You never will know if you're ready to be a mom. Even if you think you didn't want to be a mom, it doesn't mean you wouldn't be a good mom. If you don't want kids, like that's totally fine. I always knew I wanted kids and I always knew I wanted to be a great mom. Like I, my mom and dad, like basically abandoned us. They were involved in other things. I was almost given up for adoption. My grandparents um, saved us from that. And then I grew up with my grandparents and I all the time just dreamed of having a young mom and being like my other, like my friends where they had an active and involved parent and they could relate to them and they had fun with them. And so I was always spending time with my friends and their moms and it was always like really, really sad for me because it was just like, damn, 
what would it be like, you know? And still to this day, like I'll find myself all the time and like me and my friends will talk about it or Wally and I will talk about it of like, damn, what wouldn't it be nice? Like, what would it be like to have a dad or what would it be like to have an involved mom or to have grandparents for our kids? Like just so many things. And so I knew early on growing up, I always knew I wanted to have kids. Um, I used to want like five kids and thank God that has changed. (laughs) I think, I don't know when it was, but I feel like around like age 12, 13, I suddenly started to be like, "Mm, that seems like a bit out of line and not really what I actually want. I think it did help because I had to babysit my nephews a lot. Um, I fucking hated it. I did not enjoy babysitting them. They were terrors. Boys were so aggressive and so different. And I think growing up with like mean girls also really highlighted to me like, damn, like the world is fucking cruel. And I enjoy protecting my space. And the bigger your family gets, the harder it is to protect. So I think that's when I kind of like started switching. But um, I always knew I wanted to be a mom and I always knew I wanted to have kids. I never, ever, ever understood all of the things that go into being a mom and how hard it would be. Wow, this piece of hair. Um, I think growing up, you saw a lot of parents that didn't like have both parents working. So you didn't really have a huge example of both parents working. I grew up in a small town. So I grew up with like a completely different understanding of like how life would be. Um, and then also, living in the city like that's been completely different having no family support that's been completely different I remember saying that if I did not get pregnant by the time I was 25 like I was so desperate to be a young mom I think that came down to having my grandma grandparents raise us because I was like I need to be a young mom I need to be active I also want to be young enough that once they're like out of my house like I'm living life you know like my mom had always like I don't know who she had said it to, but it was basically like, once the kids grow up, I'll raise them. Like once they're old enough to take care of themselves, then I'll be able to take care of them kind of thing. And I'm the opposite where it's like, once you guys are grown up, I will be living on a beach 90% of the time. I'll take the grandkids with me. I'll come visit. Like I'll be your support, but like, I'm doing me now, you know, like that's going to be my me time, not the opposite when it's like crucial to raise your kids. So, um, that is my goal. Um, still want that to be my goal, but I think that's why I wanted to have kids so young. Um, and also I lived in Utah, so duh, you're supposed to have kids when you're like literally 18. So, um, luckily I got pregnant right before I was turning 25 and then lo and behold, right after I have Henley, then suddenly I'm adopting a son who's 11. So, Henley was one when we got Jaden and he, well, she was turning one and he was turning 11. So they're 10 years apart. Um, and that was a shock to the system. Like it's just insane. The things that go into parenting and how much I had to learn and grow still at that age. Um, but we figured it out and we're here almost 34. I feel really confident about where I'm at with my kids it does not by any means mean that I do not have guilt, shame, and like would have, could have, should have. Like, that's just the facts. We're all learning and growing. So I think it's important to note um, in your journey, wherever you're at, that like that's part of it. Um, So yeah, I don't know. I posted a couple of months ago, actually, like, I think I was dealing with like some serious mom guilt at the time. Like, I think it was like work was really busy and other things. And so I'd post it on my Instagram, like what gives you mom guilt? Um, And I shared a few things that were like more common for like how I feel it, but I actually had quite a few responses. And so before I like dive into the topic, I want to just share my mom guilt moments um, and then some that others had shared just the I don't know, maybe you can feel not so crazy or less alone knowing that like other people have felt the same thing. Um, And then we'll kind of dive into a little bit more of what I want to help you with, with the topic um, around these topics. So some of the ones that I shared, not spending enough quality time, taking a date night, taking me time, saying no, being overstimulated and less loving, 
traveling for work, dropping off at daycare when they could be with me. Um, this one specifically is because like I work from home now, you know, like we're in the summertime and Henley would go to daycare and I was like, she could actually just be home with me. Um, not being the fun mom, being the rule enforcer, not giving them everything they want. Um, a couple that have come up for me, like recently, um, that give me like kind of guilt and shame is that I don't enjoy things like volunteering at the field trip or volunteering in the classroom or, um, I do not enjoy going to the park. I despise it. Wally's always the one that takes her to do those fun things. I hate going to the parks. I hate field trips. I hate zoos. I hate the aquarium. Anything where I have to like literally stand in line and just like be there is just not my cup of tea. And it has honestly probably never been. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes I get a lot of mom guilt and shame over the fact that I don't go to all the things sometimes. Like I think as parents, we think we're expected that we need to show up to every single event, both parents. And when something might overlap, you you get guilty and you feel shame. And then not only that, sometimes your partner will do that. Like sometimes they'll shame you or guilt you for not showing up because they probably don't want to be going either. And they're pissed that you have an out, like to be honest, for real. Um, because if you go to like literally 99.9% .9 of the things and you miss out 1% or 0.1%, like it's not that serious, but you'll make it seem that serious and your partner can also make you feel like shit. So that's something to watch out for. Um, a big example right now too, is yesterday I on a whim booked like a salt cave meditation like I was trying to get like insight about my future because you guys know I've been like conflicted about where the hell I'm at right now in life and where I want to go and so I booked it on a Monday and Henley normally didn't have anything that Monday but then her private tumbling class I had booked for her for Tuesday got moved to Monday and I knew Diwali to take her which was fine he had no problem with that and she's been working on getting a specific skill um, that she needs for trying out for like an elite team and right as I'm pulling in to this thing that I was going to which I felt really uncomfortable going to like I don't do these things um very often by myself I would say so I was starting to get like really anxious about like oh my god I can't believe I signed up for this like you should just cancel like and take in Henley to her private tumbling because she really wanted you there and she was upset that Wally was taking her and not you blah 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 like all the things that you tell yourself you know like god I shouldn't have done this I should have just stayed with her um, and as I'm pulling in, Wally texts me and says that she got it, that she got her back walk over. She did it all by herself. And I immediately got tears in my eyes and I was just like, fuck, like I missed that. Like knowing that I missed the look on her face and that she did it and I didn't get to see it. I felt so guilty and I had like started to shame myself and I was like, okay, it's okay. It's good that he has these moments you'll get to hopefully see the video and it's going to be all fine. But like tears straight up in my eyes felt like shit and was just like, and this is what you get for taking time for yourself. So I don't know. It's a very hard thing to go through, but towards the end of this episode, I'll give you some tips and tricks and I don't know, just some insights of things that I do that hopefully can help you. Um, and maybe they won't who fucking knows anyways. Cause like, <laughs> let's back up. I'm not the expert mom and I'm not the do-it-all mom, but uh, I would say I'm a pretty good mom. Okay. So some of the responses that people shared with me about times um, that they had, like moments that they have mom guilt, which was nice to see because some of them were the same as mine. Someone said daycare and having the want and drive to work and not be home with them. That one is big. There's so many times that like the weekend would happen, especially when Henley was really young, um, that I could not wait to drop her off at daycare. Like I can't wait to get to work and not have to deal with being a mom the whole time. Like I love being a mom, but also there's definitely times where I'm like, I'm fucking done being a mom right now. Um, Someone else said dropping kids off at school or daycare when they are having a bad day and want to be home. 
mad oh wait not being able to do fun spontaneous stuff my whole month is planned out and I get mad when people mess with my schedule being so exhausted when I get home from work that I am boring for my kids to be around when kids are sick and I have to cancel appointments I'm assuming like with work and like other things they get like mom guilt because or like shame because I have to be a mom and that's definitely a thing that's kind of why I want to talk about like the working mom stuff with Lois because there's like a whole another side set of like things that happen and how to like navigate those um if I don't have enough notice and I can't make it not being able to do oh wait I already said that one (laughs) my bad um missing events because of work I'm the only person that does what I do at my clinic Wanting to do more than just be a mom. Biggest stressor in my life right now. Working when they're awake and wanting my attention. Using money on me instead of them. So those are just like a few. Oh, I apparently didn't save them all because I'm seeing pieces of others. But um, I must have deleted it. So sorry. But yeah. Um, it was really insightful for people that shared those. I really appreciate they appreciate that they shared those. Um, and I think it just goes to show like we all go through it. Like every single one of us is dealing with it, and it's okay to feel that way. Don't disregard your feelings, but also like know you're not alone. Um, so what I would really like to get into is like how to navigate these types of things. Um what kind of things can come up and I don't know, just the importance of like working to figure out what kind of parent you want to be and how you're going to go about doing it in a healthy way. Um, A big thing for me is like not repeating generational traumas. So I already have explained like some of how I grew up like because of my grandparents and my parents and those types of things. But Although my grandma did an amazing thing by taking us in and raising us, there's definitely things that she um, and my aunts and uncles did that have definitely impacted how my siblings and I like view the world or how I like how my sister parents versus how I parent or like those types of things. And so I think that that's what's so crucial to process and figure out is like what... Um, I guess I'll start with like the step one that I would say that we should talk about is like, it's really important to analyze what learned behaviors have been passed down to you. So what that looks like is what things happened when you were growing up that you liked or disliked about parenting or how you were treated by aunts and uncles, um, as a kid, like you have to put yourself in a kid mentality and how can you correct that for your future generations and how can you correct that and not do that? to your kids, because even if you don't want to, you have to actively know, like, I am not going to be a parent that yells to X degree, or I'm not going to be a parent that, um, spanks or whatever it is that like you grew up with, like not enjoying, um, or seeing how it impacted. Like I saw a lot of how things impacted my older siblings. And that was like a factor for me. Um, And then my sister had kids before me and like I saw how her life was going and those types of things like really, really impacted me. And I really sat and watched of like, okay, this is what I like, don't like, or I saw my friends' families, you know, like I said, I was hanging out with my friends and their parents a lot and I saw good and bad. And I really took into account like all of those factors when I became a parent of like, what kind of parent do I want to be? And like, I had conversations with Wally of like how we're going to raise our kids and how I'm going to be. And I'm constantly having to work on myself with those things so that I don't slip into those generational um, patterns that have been passed down, but then also have to help Wally know that he's slipping into one because he also comes with his own. So you need to remember like you and your partner have your own set of lessons and learned behaviors that have been passed down and you need to decide how you're going to go about that and what you actually want with your own children so it's like at that point then you need to understand what type of parent do I want to be who am I as a parent who is my husband as a parent like how are we parenting together and then also what kind of relationship do I want with my child and what is important to us as parents? Is it grades? Is it success? Is it who they are? Is it kindness? Like 
Is it that they grew up religious? All of those things are a factor and things that you actually need to talk about and then actively work on to like, like work on with your kids. Like you have to do these things with your kids. Um, a big thing for me was trying to figure out what kind of parent I want to be and what my relationship with my kids is going to be. I always knew I wanted our house to be like a house where the kids came to hang out. I didn't care if that meant I was feeding them all the time. I didn't care if that meant my house was loud and messy, whatever. That's the kind of relationship I want with my kids in my house. So how they feel about our house is an important factor. How they feel about me, how they feel about my husband, how they feel about their siblings, how they feel about everything went into account as I've like gone through this journey. I always want my house to be a safe place for them. I want them to know they can talk to us about anything. Those are the things that like went through my mind. Um, I'm, and like, I'm the mom, like it's important for me that I'm like the person leading and guiding. It would be great if like men did that more naturally, but they don't have that, you know, like the mom, it really comes down to the mom leading and driving these and being in a healthy space to do that. Because if you as a mom are not in a healthy space, you're going to be passing down these learned behaviors and these traumas that happen to you onto your kids. And then they either have the choice to do kind of like what I've done and try and correct them, or they're just going to keep repeating the cycle. And so you as a mom have to also work on your shit and get healthy with yourself and your get your mind right because it is impossible to parent when your mind is not right. Like it is so hard and it makes a terrible, terrible experience for your kids. Like it just truly does. So, um, yeah, I could harp on that for a very long time. I'm going to try and move along so I don't say too much on that and get myself in trouble. Um, another thing that would be like, good example is like I was really um really aware of my kids ages and like what should actually be expected of them at those ages like are their brains even functioning at this age and they're throwing a temper tantrum like those are really important things to keep in mind and social media was super helpful with that because I'd follow parent pages especially about toddlers and it would help me remember like Henley's just a three-year-old like she doesn't have the brain skill that I'm expecting her to have so when I'm like demanding her to do something and she's like dicking around because she's three and it's just like looking at butterflies like I have a level of expectation of her that is for an adult because I want that because I need that. I need that for my headspace. I need that for my mood, whatever it is, or I need us to get to point A from point A to point B, whatever it is. But that does not mean that Henley had that capacity. It doesn't mean that she even knew that skill yet. And so we force upon these kids at super young ages to act like an adult and process things like an adult and be ready to deal with our adult bullshit when they don't even have those brain skills yet. So I think that that was really helpful following certain pages and just reading these things, reminding myself constantly like, oh yeah, this is literally not a skill that they have yet. Um, And then another thing with that too is like with Jaden as he was like growing up as like a teenager and like going through all those things, helping to check ourselves of like, we literally did the same things at this age. Like we don't forget that you did so many of these similar things. Like you were doing the exact same thing. So what did you need in that moment? What did you need from if your parent was like having this conversation with you or dealing with this situation with you? Like what would have helped you feel safe and comfortable to have a conversation with them and motivate you to do what it is that you need to do? Like there's so many scenarios. So like I'm being a bit generic right now, but I think you should, you probably get the point. Um, I think it's also really, really important to understand who each of your children are, like understand that they're all going to be different and they all have different personalities and they have different skills and they have different mental spaces and they have different relationships with each parent and really understanding who they are. Because if you don't understand who your kids are and what they need, then you're going to be parenting them all very generic and you cannot parent each of your children the same way. Like, It's just literally impossible. And if you know that there's someone that needs to have a plan and they're someone that needs to know what's going on because they're worried about safety, like Henley is so much like Taylor. She's such a seven, like an Enneagram seven. 
Um, and I remember that very often, like, oh, okay, she's a seven. Like, these are things she's going to ask. These are like the things that make her feel comfortable. She likes to be included. Like, those things are very, very important for you to know. So the episode we talked about with Enneagram, the same goes for your kids. Like, you should know your kids' Enneagram numbers and how they function and what they need to be in a good space. Um, And also how that, like, their number works with your number. Like, that's going to be super helpful, too. So it's important to get to know your children and understand what each of them needs and how each of them feel comfortable and successful and can thrive and connect with you because ultimately you want your kids to connect with you. Um, let's see. I think there was something else I wanted to mention with that. (sighs) I'll probably get into it. Um, the next thing I want to highlight is like, it's so crucial to let go of comparisons. Um, I think it's really easy with social media in general. We do it for every aspect, career, personal, whatever. Let go of the comparisons of comparing yourself as a mom to other moms or other parents, like measuring your worth based on what you see other people doing or the standards that they have set for their family does not mean that that's what's right for you and your family or even possible for your family. Some people have more money. Some people have more family support. Some people have better mental states. Some people don't actually want to be a parent. Like don't let comparisons ruin the time that you have with your kids because it really does go so fast and it's, God, you can mess up so quickly. Like things can escalate so fucking quickly and then you'll feel so shitty. You'll like, The amount of times where, like, I just, like, reacted and regretted it and sat there, like, crying, like, feeling like a piece of shit mom, like, it's a lot and it sucks and it's not a good place to be. So what I learned from those experiences is, like, okay, how can I not get myself into this situation again? And it comes back to all of the steps that I'm talking about. Um, uh, Along those lines, because we're talking about it, um, reacting when you're also heightened in like in a heightened stress or emotional state, like is never a good thing. Like do whatever you can to take space. Do not try and solve the problem immediately. It's like the same with fighting with your husband or something. Like no one is going to get anywhere and you're not going to get the results you need if you're not in a place of having a calm conversation, either of you. So if Henley's in a mood or Jaden's in a mood or I'm in a mood, like fucking separate, come back to it. Um, with the comparisons to like, I think it's really important that you remember your family is unique to you and your family and what works for you guys might not work for another. And like, do not let that get in the way of your parenting. Um, a big thing that was a lesson for me was societal expectations too, that I was comparing my like parenting on, like Jaden struggled with school. He was never going to be somebody that loved school or, and like, I always wondered if he would even graduate or pass school. And turns out he didn't, he ended up dropping out of school while getting kicked out and we would fight and fight and fight and argue and argue and argue over school. And it was his senior year and him and Wally like had this, like my dick's bigger than you moment, yours moment. And like, in the middle of like this heated discussion and it just like hit me like my relationship with him is way more important than my comparison and expectation that like kids have to go to school and they have to be great at school and they have to graduate and then they have to have like all these successful things like sometimes this just doesn't work like it's just the way it is and if it's not working and it's causing more issues give him the opportunity to do and figure it out like that's just kind of how it is. And I had to like literally sit for a moment and be like, okay, what's important to me? My kid and I having a relationship that's long-term and him wanting to spend his time with us and bring his grandkids around and all of these things, or me pushing a societal expectation that he has to go to school and he has to graduate and do all these things that everyone says you have to do. And if you don't, then we're failures. And I was just like, fuck it. Like, my relationship with my kid is more important. How are we going to make this work? What options can I give him at this point to help navigate and guide the situation, but ultimately not force him to do the thing that I'm expecting him to do that society expects me to expect him to do. 
And that was a big learning lesson for me. And it was a really hard moment. Um, I went outside with a glass of wine, thought about all these things. I sat out in nature and I cried like probably for an hour straight. And then after that, like things have been better than they've ever been. So I think that those are just important things. Like society wants you to believe that you have to parent X way and they have to grow up and be X and you need to do what is best for you and what is best for your child and what's going to ultimately leave you guys with the result of they actually want to be around you once they're 18. My biggest fear was that he would graduate and he would never want to come back. And I've seen so many parents do things where their kids are like, once I'm done, once I'm out of this house, I never fucking want to see them. Yes, they ultimately find their way back, but look at all those years that they miss. Like, They have to mend the relationship over and over and over again. And then there's boundaries in place because the kid has learned and grown because parents don't do a lot of that, especially back in the day. And now our society is, I guess you could call us woke when it comes to this. Like we're the generation that's wanting to pave the way and change these things and put boundaries in place. And you're seeing kids that are like, yeah, I don't have a relationship with my mom or I have it, but it's very limited. And I do it on my terms because I can't handle being around her. It's really triggering, whatever. Look at all of those moments that these parents are missing out on. Do you want that? If you don't, then these are the types of things you need to work on. And also, if you're in a situation where this is happening, then you need to go get some therapy and start working on how to mend those relationships because otherwise you'll always have a limited relationship with your kid. And that's, I'm sorry, that's just not the parent I want to be. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want a limited relationship. But that's fine. Um, But yeah. Okay. Moving to the next tip and conversation that I want to talk about. Um, is practicing self-compassion because we as moms are so hard on ourselves. We set these expectations. Some of them we set ourselves and sometimes society and religions and all these things help set those for us. But we set the bar really fucking high. And I think it's important that you are reminded that you're doing the best that you can with what you have. And it's okay that you made mistakes making repeated mistakes, that is an issue. Got to work on that. Got to figure out why you keep getting yourself in these things. Um, That looks like growth therapy, research, reading books, all of the things. Um, And I don't know, just give yourself a little grace more often. I struggle with this all the time. I've gotten better at it. Um, But like treat yourself with kindness and understanding that like, You're doing the best that you can. And like, if you had a friend come to you and tell you this conversation and tell you what happened and how low they feel, like talk to yourself as if you were talking to that friend, because I know that you'd be like, girl, it's okay. Like, it's really fucking hard. So have that conversation with yourself, you know, like go stand in the mirror and be like, you're doing the best you can. That was really fucking hard. Like, good job. And also if you're like me, how can we do better in the future? (laughs) Um... There was something that I thought about while I was saying that this is what's hard with the solo episode is like thoughts will cross your mind and you want to talk about it, but you're in the middle of a conversation and then you end up just like dropping it. Um, hmm. Maybe it'll come, come to me. Maybe not. Um, okay. Next one I want to talk about is setting realistic expectations for yourself and, um, how you parent. So it's literally impossible to be perfect. It's so impossible to be the Pinterest mom. There are people out there that can do it. I don't know how they do it, but like I said, like each family is unique and other people have support systems and money and all of these worries that like we have that make it so we can't do the things that we want to do and we want to be perfect at. So just like, remember it's impossible to be perfect. Um, and we're only setting ourselves up for disappointment by thinking that we can achieve it all, do it all, be it all. Um, there's so many times where Henley will be like, I wish that on St. Patrick's day, you did this because like, I see all these things and it'd be so cool if you did this. And I'm sorry, like, I love St. Patrick's day, but like, I just don't get into it or remember it or have the capacity sometimes like you might not have the capacity in whatever that looks like money, energy, whatever to do these things. So, Just remember 
to set those realistic expectations. Don't take on too much or think that you have to do all of these things and help your children realize that that's okay to like explain to them, like how it really is parenting. You know, like I have really honest conversations with Henley about things. Like sometimes it's like, Hey, we can't actually go buy that right now because we spent a lot of money doing X this weekend and we need to save some money to make sure that we have money for food or that we don't get ourselves into trouble until the next pay period. Like let's revisit this, you know, and helping her see that like, these are things to be aware of too. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is because this is something I have guilt over a lot, um, is quality time, focusing on quality time. Um, I am not great at quality time and Wally's not either. Like we, I sometimes tell him like he needs to set like a date or something where once a month he takes her to do something or whatever to like have time. And with Jaden too, like I know that I'm not very good at having quality time with him. Our relationship's a bit unique, um, but I could be better, should be better. But again, is that a realistic expectation? I don't really know. I want to be better. How I am better is the conversation. Um, But it's important to spend quality time with each of them solo, together, whatever it looks like. Um, And it's not about what you do necessarily. It's that you put all of your to-do list away that you put your phone away and you just do something with them. Like the other day, Henley was really bored and I was in the middle of something and I was just like, you want to play Mario Kart? And we played Mario Kart for an hour. Did it impact my schedule? Not really, but it was my time of being present with her and helping her not feel alone and helping entertain her. You know, like they really will cherish those moments Um, movie nights or doing the Disney movie night that we do like those types of things the quality time that you spend with them is going to help you have that relationship with them long-term and that they will feel comfortable coming and talking to you. And that's like a big thing I want is like, I want my kids to know that they can talk to me about anything good or bad. And I've had to work really hard on not reacting. Like, especially Jaden, I was put through the test a lot with him and there was multiple times that like he would get himself into some trouble or to a situation And I would literally just Google how to talk to my kid about X situation or what to do when a kid is doing X. And like all these articles would always come up of like helping walk you through how to have a conversation that's like productive, that helps you deal with the situation at hand and not make it a reactive blow up fight where they hate you and they don't want to talk to you or tell you things because of how you reacted. Um, let's see. I feel like I'm jumping all over. Super sorry. It's like such a big topic <laughs> to discuss by yourself. And I guess I'm not as or- organized as I would like to be. Um, ah, this is a good one. Kind of like with what I was saying about like telling Henley, no, we can't like keep buying X um, just because you want it. Like, yes, I have the money, but like we got to be within reason sometimes, you know? But practice those boundaries, practice, like sometimes I have to tell Wally, like he does so much for her, like gets her watered, runs all her errands around the house for her, like all these things, which I love. I love that he takes care of both of us that way, but I have to remind him, like, you got to start making her do some more stuff on her own. Like she needs that independence. She needs to learn these things. If you do all these things for her all the time, she's going to be like a pretty fucking princess that won't even lift a finger. So setting boundaries, putting things in place of like, you can do it, but like not all the time, but It's important that you set those boundaries of learning to say no, learning to push them to do things on their own. And then also knowing when you've set the boundary too far and you need to like step back and help them. Like I've seen people be like, I fucking did this all by myself. No one taught me like just figure it out. And then the kids these days, like they just, they are built different and we need to understand like sometimes they need way more support and guidance just because we learned to figure it out does not mean this generation is going to. So sometimes, although you want them to figure it out, you need to stop and actually give them the tools and resources and help them. And then you can put the boundary in place. So like, no, I already taught you this. You know what I mean? But like, I think sometimes we're moving so fast and we grew up learning and doing so much on our own that we expect that of the same, like we expect that same level from our kids and they just don't have those skills. Like they're 
they're screen kids. What do they call them? iPad kids? <laughs> I think that's what they call them. Um, but yeah, put those boundaries in place and communicate them. So like me just telling Henley no, that she can't have something is going to cause an issue. She's going to be like, why? Or she can keep pushing it. And then you get frustrated instead of just being like, uh, yeah, I know that would be so cool if you have that. But like, we spent too much money over here doing this, or I already bought you this right now is just not the time. Like we don't have the money for it, whatever it is that you want to talk about, but like, give them a reason as to why you put those boundaries in place. Um, and that's going to help them understand it a little bit more, because if you don't communicate that, they're going to just think that you're ignoring them or you don't want to help them or you don't care. Just so many things will go through their minds. So communicate what that boundary is and why you don't have to necessarily say what the boundary is, but like communicate your why when you're telling them no to something. Um, another one that I think is important is like having a support system. Um, a lot of times I would send random things that happened as a parent to my group chat and just like use it as my venting, use it as reassurance that I'm doing a good job and that it's okay. Like, damn, that sucks, but like, you're good. Um, having people that you can discuss those things with in a safe space is really important. A big lesson, I think I've talked about it before that Jaden actually helped teach me was, and I guess this kind of plays into boundaries. Like, although you have a support system or you want to put something out there or vent about a situation parenting wise, like you still need to respect your kid and their boundary and that they don't want all their shit out there. He asked me really early on, like, please don't post these things or please don't talk about these things. Like it, like, I don't remember if he said it embarrassed him or if he just asked me not to. And I was like, oh my God, like I hadn't even thought about it because I personally needed something. I needed to vent. I needed to release something. I needed to feel okay about how I was parenting or I mean, just the world to see like that he was a little bit fucking crazy and it wasn't all my fault. You know, like it was just like those types of things, like my own self-fulfilling needs. And that moment really like, opened my eyes to like, holy shit, like don't air all of their dirty laundry. Like that's not fair to them. And it's actually really shitty to do. And now people are going to be judging him and he's going to feel insecure. So I learned really early on, like you can vent, but you don't need to give all the details. Like you can be like, dude, I'm dealing with so much with him, like, or her. And it's just been really hard. And if you can get into specifics without like throwing them under the bus, sometimes great. But if it's going to put a bad taste in someone's mouth or they're going to bring it up to them and then they realize they talk, you talk to other people, like you need to be very mindful of that. And so seek support and encouragement, but like also have a boundary in place where you're not fucking over your kid. Because ultimately you and your kid are the priority, not your support system knowing all the details. So it's not a sign of weakness to talk about things and to vent and to doesn't mean you hate your kids by venting about these things, but just be mindful of that, I guess. Um, the next thing I would like to talk about too, with like mindfulness and those types of things is my practice, like being mindful of your actions, your kids' actions, how things are going, keep calm, focus on your big picture of like what it is that you, like I said at the beginning, like what kind of parent do you want? What kind of relationship do you want? Like remember to focus on those things and be aware. Uh, Self-awareness is a huge thing that parents, I think, sometimes forget that they need to have. Um, You're literally the parent. You're the example. It's not your job to sit and argue with a child. It's just not. If you get to the point where you guys are arguing back and forth, you're stooping to a child's level. Like You're the adult. Set the example. Take space. Keep calm. Do not react find space and time to have the conversation and meet them where they are at on a good space and level playing field rather than in a heated moment, something that could blow up and make it so that you guys have problems. Um, I don't know, dwelling on past mistakes too, not giving them a chance to correct it, not trusting them, worrying about the future, like all of these things come into play as you're parenting and they cause stress anxiety like sitting and worrying about Jaden was one of the hardest things and I had to just be like it's gonna be okay you guys will handle it like hopefully he's being good 
um sitting and watching him like a hawk like the parents that sit there and like follow their kids and want to know where they are all the time like that was never me um controlling my kids is never something that I want to do I want to help guide them give them advice help encourage them to be good people um but sitting and worrying about whether they went to bountiful and why were they over there or why were you over here and parked in this parking lot forever or x y and z like yes it could be risky but I also know controlling your kids and monitoring them and not trusting them and not giving them freedom to explore and be creates a worse version of them as an adult like they're going to already get into trouble. They're going to be liars. They're going to not trust you. They're not going to want to share information with you. And then once they finally get freedom, they tend to have a bigger challenge just chilling in the world because they suddenly have freedom and they want to do all of it. And then they get into a lot of trouble, not in a controlled and safe environment. And then they're over 18 and then they get into more trouble. So I think those things were just really heavy on my heart when it came to parenting that I was like, okay, I think it'll be a little different with Henley. I could change my tune once that gets like to that stage. But for now, like I want to trust her. Yes. I'll be checking in. Yes. I'll be aware. Yes. I want them to talk to me, but I'm also not going to micromanage and I'm going to leave it open for us to have an open relationship with it rather than me trying to dictate everything and force them to be a certain way or act a certain way or stay within my parameters because that feels comfortable for me and I don't have to stress and have anxiety. Um, Let's see. I think another thing that's important is to always remember to apologize. Um, There's going to be times where you're not going to be perfect and you're not going to do all these things that I'm saying to create the best relationship with your kids. Um, But it's crucial that you apologize Anytime that Jaden and I would get in huge fights, like I'd always go into his room and I'd apologize and then he would apologize. And like, it's so important that you apologize to them when you act out of line, because again, you are the adult. If they go crazy, you have to remember their brain's not even fully functioning. It's not even developed yet. Like you cannot expect them to understand and comprehend all of the things that you're talking about when their brain is literally not there yet shit half the time Wally's brain's not even there yet and he's almost 40 like it's just the way that it is and you need to apologize when you expect them to act as an adult that understands the world and has learned all these lessons and knows all the rules and understands things that you didn't even communicate to them because we have a problem of not communicating to our kids too and then letting them get away with it and then retracting I mean like your curfew is this but they've been doing it for six times and you never said a single word because you were too tired like that's just the way it is so be mindful of those things apologize when you need to and I don't know like I said like you gotta you gotta focus on the big picture and what you really want your relationship with your child is ultimately the most important thing so how can you preserve that how can you help yourself be a better parent And I don't know, I think the rest will fall into place. Honestly, if you're practicing those things, um, I think it's important to celebrate your victories too. Like when things go good, like acknowledge them, be like, oh my God, that was really great. Like give yourselves time to be like, oh my gosh, like this happened. Like, this is so great. This is growth. This like is healthy. Like all these things that help you remember, like the hard is going to be hard. But when you get these victories, like It's so important. Progress being made, minor steps being made, they're all so important and they're going to help both of you become better. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like that's it. (laughs) I'm sure there's so many more things that I could talk about and that I missed. But at the end of the day, like I said, I really want people to know like you're not alone. This is really fucking hard. And what, what it really comes down to is like identifying what kind of parent you want to be how you want your children to be, what relationship you want to have with them and like working from there and like do your research, learn and understand and seek to understand them. Um, It's important that we allow them to be themselves. You know, like I hate the color purple and I hate elephants and I hate cats and all these things. But if I force that on Henley, like it doesn't work that way. They have their own minds. They have their own personalities Hold on, my kid needs to get ready. Get ready for cheer. 
Um, huh? We already talked about it. Again, <laughs> parenting never stops. Um, anyways, I don't even know what I was saying at this point, but don't be so hard on yourself. Don't seek perfection. Don't seek the approval of everyone else around you. Like do what works for you and your kids and works for you and your family and do the best that you can, because if you're not going to do the best you can, and you're not going to learn and grow and try to improve and correct these generational traumas that are being passed down over and over and over again, like society will continue to be fucked and you'll have a terrible relationship with your kids. Like I'm telling you, I have so many friends that do not have a good relationship with their parents because their parents did not learn and grow and try to fix things too. Like, yes, you could have not had the skills at the time, but you have, you have the internet, you have books, you have the resources, you have therapy. You have so many things that you can do now to fix and correct these things so that you can be a better parent now, because you're still here. You're still their mom. You're still their dad. And if you choose to ignore it, like that's on you. Um, but kids these days, they're, they're not having it. They're just not. So I don't know. I'm proud of that, but it's also a big reality that kids have so many options now to just say, fuck you. And you don't have to see them anymore. So I don't want to end on a bad note, but I just want you guys to all know, like, I think parenting is really hard. I'm sure you're doing the best that you can with what you have. Know that you can always learn and grow and do better. And it really just comes down to what it is that you want out of your parenting and your relationship with your kids. So on that note, I'm going to end this podcast. I hope you all have a lovely week. I hope if you ever have questions or you want to vent or talk about parenting things, please don't hesitate to reach out to me because I'm here for you. Um, I'll definitely ask if you want advice or if you just want to vent because I'm learning that is a thing. I give advice when people don't want it. Um, and yeah, I'm here for you. I hope you are following us on Instagram. I hope that you like and subscribe and leave us a five-star rating. You don't have to leave a written review, but it'd be really cool if you did. And we will talk to you next time. Bye.